welcome everybody to Two Drunk Dudes in a Gun Room. Hey, today I got Battle Scars Motorsports with uh, Brian Check and Brian Finnell. How you guys doing? Doing great. Good, good. Awesome, man. Hey, uh, why don't you guys um, take turns and, and just tell each other a little bit about, uh, tell everybody a little bit about you guys. So. Sounds good. Check, you go first. Me go first. Yeah. Uh, okay. So, thirty-seven. Uh, married for the second time. I've got uh, three kids of my own: a son, two sons, and a daughter. And then I have a stepdaughter. Um, I live in Biloxi, Mississippi. Um, I retired from the Marine Corps in well last June, so it's almost been a year since I retired. Um, I was uh, been I've been to Afghanistan twice. I was on a Mew. Yeah, I mean that's nothing other than Battle Scar Motorsports. I got nothing exciting. <laughs> <laughs> now, but go uh, ahead there, Big B. Yeah. So uh Ron Fennell, 40. Oh, yeah, the ages. Uh I like to say I'm 29, but uh I think it's 45 now. Um was in the Marine Corps Reserves from 97 to 2003. Um so 0352 tow gunner, which we actually still fired toes in. Uh, that's I've heard that's uh, mostly a javelin type thing now, which I kind of kind of envious of. Uh, <laughs> the uh, been married uh, for wow, anniversary is coming up here. Let's see here, 2000. Oh man, she's gonna watch this too. Oh no, I'm not gonna show her this. <laughs> um, 2000. Oh god, if I mess this up. So April 22nd, but let me see if I get the year right, 2005. So, man, that's coming up for, what, 17 years, I guess? Yeah. Um, yeah. That's That's been a while. So uh, we got three mm -hmm. kids. Um, only one left in the house now. Uh, one's already been in the Marine Corps. He was a intelligence specialist, mostly at Cherry Point. Um, he's medically retired now. Um, uh, middle boys in college doing awesome. Um, and then I got a young one still in uh, about to be a freshman in high school next year. And awesome, then man. A lovely wife, Christy. Somehow she puts up with me. Uh, <laughs> so, and then, then I run a, I run an automotive shop here just south of Austin, uh, in a little town called Kyle, Texas. And, uh, that's, you know, being automotive, you know, kind of run into a check back in 2000. 18, I guess. Yeah, 18, yeah. Yeah. And uh yeah. that's kind of like when we got our, our start going. And and uh anyways, they, they need a little mechanical help, and I'm I'm pretty good at that. So uh we've we've got like peas and carrots since. That's awesome, <laughs> yeah. man. That is awesome. So uh um how how long do you say you was in the Marines for? Me? Yeah. Uh 97 to 03. So is it it was a six-year reserve contract. Got hit okay. with a stop loss early in, well, December of 2002 when uh, IOF got fired up. And um, I think they lifted the stop loss in, I guess, that, that June or July of 03 and then okay. went to IRR after that. So, so, so both of you guys can, can – so in the Army, like I tell everybody, I came in in 94. And – before 9-11, it was like a job going to the bank. You know, I mean, nine to five, did your thing, everything was on cycle. And then after 9-11 is when things got really crazy, right? Was it the same way for you guys in the Marines or, or did they still have other stuff going on that you guys were dealing with? Um, for, for me, it was very similar since I was on a reserve contract, you know, prior 90 or prior 9 11 you know we did our our weekend training you know once mm -hmm. per month and then two weeks out of the summer usually summer um all that works you know pretty much like you know once we switch to training you know come from civilian life back into training uh, it's just like every day i think the difference between like us and like active duty is that when we come in for our drill weekends it isn't like we come in at you know zero six hundred and we're done at you know 1350 or right or whenever right i mean we're training forever you know the whole time we're there yeah so it's non-stop training while we're there um 
that that's always been the same. Post post nine eleven, nothing really changed, minus everyone calling you asking you if you were going overseas. <laughs> okay, <laughs> yeah. I I remember the uh, you know the 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 not memes but the the pictures that a lot of the national guards and and reservists and everything was holding that said uh, one week in a month, two weeks a year, my ass. Yeah. Right. Yep. Yeah. You know, I think as that train got going, man, everybody kind of got snatched up, you know? Yeah. I, I started out in the reserves and, and I ended up going active within the first year or so. Yeah. Very good. Yeah. And for, for Chick being a long time, uh, yeah. a, a career, a career man. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I did almost seven, almost 18 years. Yeah. Almost so, made it. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, with his, I don't know what all might have changed for him. Um, what all changed you know, for him? Because when I came in in 2004, we were already on the war already foot. Goes, and yeah. It's already, yeah. yeah, they had already, uh, you know, the initial invasion of Iraq had already happened by the time I even showed up. I mean, Fallujah happened the year I went in. So, um, or Fallujah won. Anyway. What a shithole, huh? Well, I, yeah, I never made it to to Iraq, but my two deployments to Afghanistan, I I loved it. I had a really? great time. Where were you at in yeah. Afghanistan? Well, uh, I deployed with Marsoc first of all, so that was the that's what really made it best because we were on our own and we did our own fucking thing. <laughs> uh, we had our own chow hall, we had our own gym. Um, Damn. I mean, it was fantastic. Um, in my second deployment. Um, well, my first deployment, we're in Herat. The second one was Shindan, but the second one, um, our CO, I guess there was some sort of credible threat against uh, uh, soft forces, Marsoc being among them. Mm -hmm. uh, and so we didn't wear, we wore camis in and then we wore camis out. We were in cities the entire rest of the time. And if we had to go outside for whatever reason, if we were going on some sort of op or whatever we were doing, going on the road, we had tricolors that we would wear. Uh -huh. um, so basically, from a distance, we would look like uh, like Kandak or A and A soldiers. Uh, okay, but or commandos. I'm sorry, commandos, not this patch right here. Okay. Oh fuck! I'm gonna tear fuck it all off. <laughs> fucking up my board. Oh my god! I've had that up there forever. But oh shit! The camera's over here. <laughs> <laughs> Like oh yeah, look, it's it. You 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 don't see it, you fucking idiot. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, man. So, I I was a special forces. I was uh, an embarkation specialist uh, in the Marine Corps, and then I when I then I went warrant in 2015, and so I became an embarkation officer, and then retired uh, seven years after that, something like that. Well, that's awesome, man. Yeah. So uh, the organization came. So you two met after the uh, the military. So how did how did this organization? I mean, were you guys like drinking a couple of beers and said, you know what, that'd be cool. Let's just put some veterans in a car who don't know what they're doing. No, that's not how it started. It started because it started because I had nothing to do when I came home from a deployment. My wife got sick of seeing me do nothing, and she let me buy th this. Matter of fact, this car right here. Chesty, she let me buy that car. It didn't look like that when we bought it. I promise you that. <laughs> it's been repainted so many times. Uh, but it, uh, we drove up to Charlotte to go get it from Camp Lejeune, and I bought the whole thing, the whole kit and caboodle. It came with like six extra tires and wheels and all these spare parts. And I even bought the guy's trailer. The dude was just getting out of it entirely. And the car oh. had been running. In a, in, a, in a series that we no longer run in since 2009. It stopped racing in 2014. We bought it, I bought it in 2017, and it's still, well, it's not racing anymore, right? It's not racing anymore yeah. this year, right? It's done? Well, you, prob, probably not. So, <laughs> it, it, <laughs> old Chesty has a, a replacement being built by me right now. Okay. So, it, it's it's been raced so long, it needs to be retired because it's fatigued. And chassis flexes a lot, even though it has a full blown cage in it, you'd be surprised what metal fatigue will do with flexibility. And 
Oh, I'm sure so things break on it quite a bit. So, uh, but, <laughs> but it's still, I mean, I, I just moved it today out of uh, an area I had to do a little work in. So, uh, oh, Chessie still runs. <laughs> oh man. Uh, but yeah, it started with that car and it was just was supposed to be something fun with, you know, Marine Corps buddies of mine that all wanted to do it. And we went and did our first race in the car. <laughs> we made, did really good on Saturday and Sunday morning. We had this kid that went out and just, he just grenaded the fucking motor. Um, <laughs> actually, he, he overheated it. And I don't know if you know if you're familiar with CMP, uh, Carolina Motorsports Park. So he went through. To, it, there's uh, what 15 turns in total, 17 turns in total at CMP, Not something 17. like that. So this guy went through turn three, and at that point, the the uh, the engine had basically overheated and it had boiled off, so it had shot everything out. And instead of shutting the car down, he drove all the way around, and in so doing, he warped the uh, believe it or not, the crankshaft was warped. When I crap. I tore it all down one day uh, before I because I just wanted to know what was wrong with it. If I could figure it out, and at that, that at that time I couldn't even spell motor, so I had no idea what the fuck I was doing. <laughs> uh, I still don't know what I'm doing. Um, but Marie, I rolled, <laughs> yeah, I rolled that that crankshaft on the round on the ground, and it just like wobbled. I'm like, you fuck's sake! The bearings were cooked. The little right, isn't that what bearings are? They go in between the little U joint yeah. thingies. Yeah, yeah, that they were fucking, <laughs> they were fucking shredded. This it is was, why this is why they needed me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Matter of fact, we met first on the phone in late yeah, at, 18 at Road Atlanta. Yeah, you're at Road Atlanta. And yep. the first time we met was the was the following January at Barber. So Barber Motorsports Park in 2019. And I showed up with a car that needed a fucking radiator installed. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so that was his first introduction to me um and i don't think we had any major we didn't show up i didn't show up in any majorly fucked up the, the next race at at nola new orleans motorsports park but we blew the i we uh our one of our army guys blew the <laughs> blew the fucking intake up which was insane yeah uh, so he was to put that in perspective to paint a picture here it was raining first off so racing and trying to go fast on rain is difficult. Absolutely. Then you mix in veterans that have never drove a race car before, yep. and it gets real interesting. And so Mr. Lane <laughs> was rolling down the straight at NOLA, hydroplaned, spun the car around backwards, never pushed in the clutch. <laughs> uh, he, just, he just held on, you know, and just like, hey, I'm going for a ride. Well, when the car spun backwards and caught traction, it's, you know, clutch is not in and it caught traction, spun the yeah. engine backwards yeah. and just exploded the intake with pressure. And uh, <laughs> there's actually a video. I don't know if it's on our YouTube or not. I think uh, it's we've got it somewhere. Yeah, we've got it somewhere. And you can actually hear the intake pressurize and then go. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I wonder so, if I have the pictures. Uh, of, keep talking. Uh, I'm gonna, I bet you I can find them. Yeah. So, but that was that the race that this is kind of the race where we kind of seen what yeah, we were doing. Yeah. Because it was Lane like, and it was Lane and Alex showed up. And Alex. Was, yeah. So cool. we had Lane showed up. Um, we had another guy, uh, Alex, who kind of showed up. He we had to teach him how to drive a manual of all things. <laughs> This is, and, that's not a good start. <laughs> oh, no, it was crazy, right? So we're teaching him to drive a manual transmission. You know, when he first showed up, he was, you know, standoffish, really reserved, not talking much. Um, you know, I, maybe, maybe even like anyone might be a little bit embarrassed. That he can't drive a manual. We're like, hey, we're going to teach you, you know. And we're still teaching him. <laughs> we're still teaching him. <laughs> 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 and, but I kid you not, from the first event when he showed up and he's just kind of standing there to at the end of the event, you know, he he wouldn't be quiet. You know, by the time we got him in the car, he got track time. He got that adrenaline rush. He got that teamwork feel again. Then he gets out of the car and he said, man, you know, and he, the excitement was just nuts. And we're like, man, that 
that just did something for him, you know, and, yeah. and that's kind of what was the catalyst or one of the catalysts to starting, you know, like, Hey, this, this is more than just going out and goofing off and having a good time. This is, this can help people. So that's, yeah. that's where the ideal formed. Yeah. So just so, just to give everybody a little bit of background. So, you know, a lot of people are going to see motorsports. They're going to think NASCAR and stuff like that. Explain to everybody a little bit what the difference is in the, in the way that, that you guys race. Cause I know it's completely different than what anybody's thinking. So, yeah. all right. You got Formula One at the very top. Yep. Right. Formula One, World Rally, uh, NASCAR, I guess. Yeah, NASCAR. If we're, if we're talking like road courses. Yeah, I know. I know. Sort of yeah, well, in, so. in road course, you can get into your IMSA. Uh, right. And down at the very SCP. bottom of that scale of driving skill, we're still <laughs> going down to the floor. Think center of the <laughs> earth. Is it's kind of how far this goes down? <laughs> Those are the people who drive in Champ Car Endurance Series and Lucky Dog, like us, uh, who have well at the time who we weren't doing this out of our own pockets, uh, have very little money, but have a love for speed and automotive racing. Um, and yeah, that's who we race. But here's the funny thing: so yes, it's totally bottom of the barrel, but mm-hmm. we we have raced against Travis Pastrana. We've raced, um, who was the other guy that was there a couple of years ago? It was Pastrana and somebody else, somebody else from Nitro Circus. We raced with that dude. Um, yeah, Pastrana. So at MSR, that's the Yokohama stunt and exploded. That's with 24 hours of limits that we race sometimes. Yeah. And, um, yeah, so Pastrana was there. He had his, if anyone has watched Pastrana videos, there's, a, there's another guy that rolls with his crew. Back in the day, there was a video, his name was Street Bike Tommy. And there's a famous video of him running a street bike, obviously. Tra- Travis had his, at his house, he had the foam pit that they would practice flips on their dirt bikes mm-hmm. into. And, well, so street bike Tommy was going to do the same thing and jump a street bike into it. Well, he just cooked it wide open and overshot the pit and landed <laughs> on the back side of it. And, of course, he, like, messed himself up. So that's what street bike Tommy's crazy or known for so what he, the fuck yeah for real you gotta look it up um, oh my god and then um let's see at cmp we had um mr nascar uh son of a oh greg biffle we've raised yeah, against biffle. greg biffle we've raised uh, against uh yep in a crown vic i'm still trying to get that crown vic from them <laughs> still i have a six month reminder on my phone and every time that pops up i find the conversations that we've been having in Facebook that were now six months old. And I'm like, Hey man, what's up? What, you going to give us that car or what? Like you're not racing it. <laughs> give it to somebody who will fucking use it. God's so sake. Are these uh so is it a set amount of laps that you guys do or, or it's an, it's over an hour basis. So you have a seven plus eight. So you have a seven hour event on a Saturday and a seven hour event on a Sunday. Okay. A 14 hour straight, which is what we just did in Daytona or a 24 hour straight. Now, our 24-hour events are only for our like our most experienced and senior individuals who have raced with BSM before. Mm-hmm. We made the mistake twice. Twice. Bring, well, the first time we did it, when we ran Chesty, it wasn't too bad because no one knew what the fuck they were doing. The yeah. second time we did it, we ran three cars at a 24-hour event with the closest auto zone being like 45 minutes away. Uh, Ryan, really actually, Fennell was the one who headed that event up. It was 18 hours just to drive up there from Austin to, to Denver. Only to have the cars fucking play games. Uh, Wild War was what? There was like bolts missing out of the rear suspension. Well, they they run it off track, and I swear, I mean, so the car was running well in class, and then they run it off track, uh, middle of the night, unlit track, you know, which we have headlights and fog lights or whatever extra lighting we put on the cars, and it comes in and it had sheared the left rear brake hose off the caliper. And we're like, how in the hell does that happen? You know, <laughs> get to looking at it. Well, the, the leaf spring is, the perch is ripped out of the body on the car. So they did some <laughs> serious off-roading before yeah. they got it back around to the pit space. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> I don't know if I, I think, do I have that picture? Well, we got pictures of everything. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. This is but, when Chess. This is when Chesty or Ladder Three was overheating, uh, and they they wrote. <laughs> I don't think you, like a, you need to share. You need to share. Like, allow me to share my screen because it's not letting me do it. But 
he wrote on the cardboard it says be cool bitch because <laughs> the fucking oh, thing gets over the yeah if i can figure out how to do it we did get some good pic- we actually did get some good pictures uh and that was the first time chesty ran uh the custom motor that we had built that was built for us yeah yeah roy beckett had built that motor and donated it to us um nice little built two valve four six strict flow heads l m cams forge rotating assembly um full length headers that, that engine runs well it's it, you know most most crown well say say a mustang two valve 4.6 liter makes with full bolt-ons at the wheels that make 270 ish horsepower um, our Crown Vic with conservative timing with that built motor makes 330 wheel horsepower. So it's it's fun to wheel around the track. So so these these guys that are starting out, um, man, they're not they're not starting out with just uh um uh you know four cylinders. So so my when I r- was racing, I raced a uh, a Chevy Love in the the mini stock nice. yeah, yeah. So you know that's where I started out. And it was just for fun for me, you know, I wasn't because of the military, I wasn't there all the, every week, you know, and, and a lot of the other racers didn't like that because, you know, if I couldn't fix the car, I just wasn't there and they're all competing for points and, and everything else. But, uh, so that's where I started out, but you guys are starting people out V eights and, and the whole nine yards. Yeah. Uh, yeah some, people who sometimes. have never driven. Oh, go ahead. Sorry. Oh yeah. I mean, we, I've put, we put drivers and not necessarily successfully, but we put <laughs> brand new drivers behind the built motor in Chesty. And a, a good example of what happens is usually they, they're just, you know, we, we give instruction, you know, we supply gear, we, we, we they got to watch, you know, essentially rookie videos to kind of orientate themselves to racing. Okay. Most everyone that comes out for racing kind of has an idea, but we, we still give them a good platform and knowledge to go out with. So they, they know what's going on, but they may not have ever done it before. Right. And and it, and it shows because they'll go out on track. And, and the perfect example was a year and a half ago, we were at Harris Hill Raceway and we had two new drivers. We put those guys out first. Probably not. A, we should have put them out like last, but Regardless, learning experience for us. We put them out first. They're driving really slow, but they were doing okay. They held their own. They come in. They're all jazzed up and had a great time. And then we get an experienced driver in the car and literally pick up like 20 seconds of lap time, which is massive on a road course. Yeah. And we had teams coming over to the to our pit, and they're like, what What did y'all do to the car? And we're like, well, what, what do you mean? And like, Man, the car was struggling and slow this morning, and now it's hauling ass. I'm like, oh, that's just a driver change. <laughs> <laughs> so, but you know, the whole the whole point is for the guys to go have fun and girls yeah. go out and have fun and and enjoy the track. Uh, it doesn't matter how fast they are, and we put them, even though we we put them in a fast car, they're not going to drive it to its ability. They just. Right they're not used to that and they're going to think they're flying and come in and you're like, Oh yeah, you're, you're essentially 20 seconds off the pace of a fast driver, but that's okay. We're not here to set records. We're here to have fun. So, yeah. And, and they're probably afraid that they're going to wreck the car and damage it and, and everything else too. I mean, some, some, some have just, I'll just put it bluntly. Just don't give a shit. (laughs) Other people's equipment and things that don't belong to them. So <laughs> we run into that more often than we should. Uh, and it is extremely frustrating when somebody gets behind the wheel of a car. And so this, this actually, this happened in, I think this was MSR Houston 21. Uh, when we got hacksaw, um, we wild boar our 79 Camaro, Daniel Johnson busted his fucking ass getting that car ready. He's our Louisiana chapter lead. Um, actually, I guess we should have said that at the beginning. I run the Mississippi chapter. Brian runs the Texas chapter. We have Daniel Johnson is our uh, Louisiana chapter. And we have Kenny Clark is our Georgia chapter. And our interim chapter uh, lead for Indianapolis uh, is Leslie Farner. Um, but... Uh, Oh, I just heard a kid crying. I lost my train of thought. Oh, Jesus. 
You're talking about guys tearing up on bars. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. So yeah. yeah, yeah. So you, you were talking about Daniel prepping while. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So he had just put a brand new transmission in. Matter, matter of fact, that transmission was brand new, donated by somebody that Fennell knew. That car, that engine, that that transmission had never even been on on track yet. And I think the car did two stints. And this this guy, we this marine. <laughs> This Marine reservist we had to get in the car. I mean, good kid, but man, he just didn't give a fuck. And he went out for two laps, came in, and like, like he, the whole transmission was like completely fucked up. Wow. Like, hey, he, almost, he literally almost ripped the shifter off of him. He, it basically like fucking grenade the damn thing. As a matter of fact, people have broken the shifter off of our cars. It was <laughs> battery three at MSR Houston in 2019. Somebody was shifting the fuck out of it and broke the aluminum shifter off. And when uh, yeah. our, our transmission sponsor at the time, when I sent them the picture, they were like, the guy was like, no one has ever fucking done that. Like to, <laughs> I said, well, I don't want aluminum anymore. Give me fuck. You're going to have to give me steel because I, I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> and that's a part of the reason why we kind of lost the sponsorship with them uh -huh. because we were turning in these transmissions over to them every three to six months over a, a two and a half year period. Yeah. And then it became two transmissions. Then it was nearly a third. And they were like, dude, y'all have got to do something fucking different. Like we have people who drive their cars in professional racing environments for years, with the same transmission for years. And the only maintenance is changing the mother loving oil. Wow. The, trans the synchro mesh in it. And like, <laughs> so it's, <laughs> Oh my God. It's uh, one of the biggest it's things. Our biggest expenditures, besides parts and oils and tires, are consumables because things are either lost or I'm going to go with taken unintentionally because that's what I'm going to hope. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to hope that that's the case. Um, but, I mean, as, as, as much as that sucks when we're going through inventory and our shit and we're missing uh, clothing items, you know, we supply all the safety suits and sock shoes, gloves, balaclavas, helmets. Um, you know, as frustrating as it is to have to keep buying that shit year after year. Uh, yeah. It's conversations like these when we were, were able to talk about this with someone outside the organization and you realize like, well, yeah, that fucking blows. But what we're doing is really awesome. Yeah, so absolutely. we just keep yeah. putting on the knee pads and slobbing on dick for more money to buy shit that people keep breaking. <laughs> <laughs> Eventually, my fucking throat's going to get worn the fuck out and I'm going to end up like Val Kilmer. But maybe what you guys need to do is is put red and blue lights. Box. Put, put red and blue lights in the in the back window, so they think the cops are coming. You know, then they don't actually. They want to stop. <laughs> our, the cop car we have has working lights and sirens on it. <laughs> yeah, it was it was a detective's car, and it had the armored door in the drivers in the driver door for a long time. <clears throat> until somebody will name Relamus, uh, Relame, Rename, Relame, whatever, you fucker, uh, took it out of the car. <laughs> well, it's a nice one piece. <laughs> and that ballistic plate literally weighs like 60 pounds. Yeah, I know. Tell me, did you keep that or did you huck I it? I haven't. I haven't. Okay, something. good. <laughs> <laughs> I thought about up armoring my, my F 250. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> good. It would, it would fit in the door for sure. Yeah, it would. <laughs> Barely. Oh yeah. So, so what's the uh, recruiting pro process? I mean, I'm I'm sure they're not going through the VA to to sign up for for y'all. No, uh, it's word of mouth. Really? I mean, that's how you found us. That's how word of mouth has been really good for us the last two years. Before we were doing a lot of legwork, trying to find people, going into with other organizations and things like that, and searching wow. through forums and blah 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 blah. We will hit the forums every now and then on 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 certain racing uh, websites, but for the most part, people just they find us, and it actually is great because that means these people were they were told about us, they were yeah. we were recommended, and that's usually what we that's what we're looking for, and that's what we've been getting a lot of. Yeah, I kind you know when I when I seen this, I was like, man, I bet you they they are beating people off with a stick with how many people is probably asking to be a part of this sometimes. Kind of slow so this year, actually, which is weird because we're running the most events ever. I think seventeen. That's. I mean, I think that's probably some of it, right? So we had, we had spent our our calendar 
um, in our race venue. So we have essentially more seating spots for people looking looking to get away with us. So that, that kind of reduces, you know, oh, yeah, we're full for this event. Now, I will say, Howlett, you know, that's my next race up in Oklahoma. And I think we only have one seat left for that. We we filled that almost instantly, which that's a pretty fun Yeah. Event. So it, it happens, you know, some events, it just depends where it's at and how the, you know, everything comes into play. Right now, economy is part of it. You, you yeah. know, we see a little bit of downfall. People are, you know, we're still recovering from COVID. Yeah. Uh, you know, it, it, it makes it a little harder. So, uh, but I, I will say pre and pre COVID, we were, we were crazy. Actually, it's pretty wild, but uh, with with the amount of people wanting to race, but we, we've expanded quite a bit in the last two years, and that's kind of helped with the influx of people wanting to come race with us. Yeah, I seen yeah. a post on Facebook where you guys were were looking for somebody to take over a chapter, and it, it seemed like you guys had a, a big response from that too. We did. Yeah, yeah, because we we are, we're looking to uh, put in a chapter lead at Indiana to help. Uh, Essentially, uh, Leslie and then uh, Brian Check, even like me, you know, Check being our our COO and or our CEO, and I'm COO. When we get busy with you know behind the scenes stuff, you know, yeah. literally we, we wrapped up a meeting right before we jumped on this, um, and then we have our regular jobs too, right? So yeah. it it's a lot of work, and a lot of people have no clue how much work goes in behind the scenes. And then you try to balance in chapter lead with car maintenance, repairs, gear check even becomes more so uh you know so we're we're always looking to expand and and looking for volunteers to help us because it's it's a tremendous amount of work to keep it going and and it's it's hard to express how much it is behind the scenes with what we do to it's more than i would have ever imagined i mean it's it's another full-time job from your regular job yeah no i i I agree so so i i I run this podcast and i'm putting together a uh a veteran uh, radio station where it's strictly just veteran content and nice. I, yeah i'm gonna tell you man between the website and advertising and the podcast and that radio station i literally i get up i go to work and then i do uh, probably one to two interviews a day yeah and then i gotta edit all that stuff and yeah <laughs> man, it's it's a it's a full-time job if, if my kids weren't growing man i don't there's no way i'd be able to do it you know we, I mean, hell, think about it. we were doing this and we were hosting our own podcast about two years ago. Yeah. Three years ago, we were hosting our own. So we had all of this shit going on. And then every other Wednesday or something like that, we were hopping on a podcast, talking with somebody or just talking to each other. And after like 12 or 13 episodes, we actually had well over 100 something people watching it by that time. Yeah. And so we were like, OK, this is actually good, you know, because we already we've got like 16 K follower on, on Facebook, which for us is a lot. Uh, but that was, that's slowly, you know, that, that was slowly going up because of the show as well. Cause the people were community was talking and was showing up people's feeds. Yeah. Um, but it, dude, I, uh, I don't have the time for that. I don't have the time for social media anymore. It's, yeah. uh, that's it's, a good thing. It's, it's insane. Um, <laughs> I mean, yeah. today I, I have, I remote work from, I remote from, I work remotely from home, Jesus. And I <laughs> set a meeting for 145 to 215 because that was the only time I had that was open because of other meetings I had throughout the day. But both of those, but I, within two hours of that meeting today, I had two meetings that popped up on the front end and the back end of that one. So, <laughs> and ending at two and then starting at two right in the middle of when this one meeting was going. So I was able to juggle it with another meeting with my zoom going I, and I muted teams, but then I went into another meeting where I needed to pay attention and I couldn't have both unmuted, even though I had my audio was muted here. This still was piping through. And so the people <laughs> that I work with could hear I'm like, Oh fuck. I just quick turn zoom off and just like pretending like i don't know i don't know what that was uh, chinese interference oh, so, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> fucking weather blue <laughs> so, yeah that shit's brutal <laughs> so uh i'm so i'm assuming the way this works is is once you guys pick the veteran that's gonna go it's his responsibility to get to wherever the race is right 
mostly. Yeah. Sometimes we're <laughs> able to fly them in. Really? Which is super cool. We've been able to do that twice. That is awesome. Twice. Yeah. Twice yeah, for we'll flights, but several times for gas money. Okay. For people that want to drive. That is awesome, man. So, yeah, but we, but like I was saying, we provide all the safety equipment. Yeah. So, like, you know, the socks, the gloves, the helmets. Um, we feed everybody for four days. Um, so you, typically, we're there for four days Thursday at, uh, at midday and through Sunday midday, mid afternoon, mm -hmm. uh, late or early evening, I should say. Yeah, early um, evening is probably accurate. Yeah. Yeah. Early evening. Uh, maybe late evening if people decided the jet not help pack, <clears throat> which sucks. Hate that. <laughs> Nobody ever wants to help us pack, man. I swear to God, it. I those are the two things that get me irritated in an event. When so people don't, it's, a, it's the working party. When people don't pick <laughs> their shit up. God, yes. When people don't pick their shit up and they leave trash all over the place, that drives me crazy. And when tools yeah. are everywhere that aren't theirs, like it, you know, the majority of the stuff in the box up until about two years ago was all my stuff because we didn't have anything. Yeah. Uh, that was capable to go on the roads, you know what I mean? And so recently, you know, with things working out, we've been able to get more tools. And so now we've got a ton of extra shit in there. But anyways, you know, it's not theirs. They don't, whatever. Right. Uh, and then people like, they, they like the jet mid-afternoon on Saturday. Or like if they're really smart, they'll leave like before lunch. Because then they're like, <laughs> oh yeah, I have an early flight. Because then they, now they're out of it completely. They're not hanging around long enough to where it like becomes a problem. Now, now you give the blueprint. <laughs> yeah. We'll, yeah. We'll edit that part out. Like three minutes from now, everyone will be like, oh, yeah, I have a noon flight. We'll yeah. like, let me <laughs> let me catch you motherfuckers doing that. <laughs> yeah. crazy, crazy. There's nothing worse, man. When you're especially if we have the fucking 10 up. Oh my God. We have this huge 30 uh 40 by 30 uh flame resistant tent. So it's mm -hmm. made of PVC. It's fucking heavy. And, you know, we've got to put the whole thing together. It's like fucking Ringling Brothers, Barnum and Bailey out there. <laughs> we got the flags up. It's just like, it's the complete, real so, complete package. We, we had the good idea, like, well, it was at the 24-hour um, melee up in, up in Colorado with the three cars. And we're like, hey, before we take this down, we're going to color coat all the joints, different colors. So next time we put it up, it's going to be very easy. You know, it, it's going to be by the colors, <laughs> right? Well, next event, we're putting up the tent and they use like, you know, there's, there's one, two, three. It there's was like three. green, pink, yeah, yellow. Three critical <laughs> joints, but they use like, they use three colors, but painted several joints, the same color on different halves of the tent. There was, so, you basically had, it's like sending someone an Excel file where a lot of the columns and rows are colored. But they didn't give you a fucking legend to explain what the damn <laughs> colors were. It was so when, it went, when we tried to put that thing together at MSR Houston at the event right after that in November, it was at 21, right? 21? Yeah. Uh, yeah, that was when Hotshot Secrets was here. Uh, they, they actually filmed us walking around like monkeys fucking a football bat because we couldn't figure out how to put the damn tent together. <laughs> How many rods does it take to assemble a tent? <laughs> um, all of them. Now, I will say, I tried to preempt this because we had an issue two races before. So I laminated the instructions. And I'm tying in what I was talking about earlier. It's no, no one else's fucking problem after the event or before or during. They were gone. By it's on the, the track end, somewhere. Like the second event we had, they were fucking gone. So the instructions that I had created and laminated on purpose so they wouldn't be lost were gone. Uh, I had even duct taped one inside of a case that housed the little cinchers we have that like hold the fabric to the poles. Nope, someone had ripped that whole fucking thing. That's gone. So I, I don't even bother with it anymore. When we show up, I'm like, there's two numbers, twos and ones. Twos go this way, ones go this way, figure it out. And then eventually so it, it pops up. <laughs> eventually it pops up. Typically what happens is it's a six section, 40 foot tent. We typically get to five and it turns into a clusterfuck because nobody can remember, even myself, if there's a sixth section. And so everyone, now everyone's arguing about whether the fact we even needed it. And it's these are people who have set the fucking thing up with me before. So it's wow. just <laughs> no one ever remembers how to put the thing up. So it, it's always a fucking disaster. No, I think we, both did, 
we'll usually build one side first. And and several times we've had like eight sections together and we're like, wait, 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 guys, this is, this is way too long. This is not, this is 40 feet, not 60 feet. You know, we need to take a couple of sections off here. <laughs> and the thing is, the, the crazy part about that is the way the numbers are, you've got all these, I don't know if twos or ones, Alex Barton, you fucking tell me, I don't remember. But <laughs> like the one set of numbers went this way and the other set of numbers went like went up and then made the groove. Right. So it's really hard to fuck up. So when we do do like eight things of eight sets of like long ways, it's like it, <laughs> it's all <laughs> fucked up because some of the pieces are longer than other. And you're like, you're standing there like, Guys, there's no way this is going to fucking... What are we doing here? Oh, well, you just said put it together. <laughs> and they just like... You're like, yeah, but not like that. So <laughs> there's a lot of that. There's a lot of that. There's a lot of like... Um, it's the teamwork. It's the teamwork. <laughs> yeah. There's, you know what, though? It's, frust it's funny now, but it's frustrating then. But no matter what, it's all about the camaraderie. And no matter as frustrating as that is, I don't think anybody's ever actually gotten legitimately mad over putting up the tent. It's all yeah. like hilarious frustrations. You're inevitably, somebody's getting poked in the butt with a pole. Inevitably. And that happens <laughs> every time. Uh, yeah. I mean... <laughs> So is is that is the tent used for sleeping arrangements and all that stuff? Is that what it's for? No, we it's meant for housing the cars uh, in the event of inclement weather. We work on them so we're out of the sun. It keeps people out of the sun when they're not racing. We also cook and eat under the tent. Okay. And then we rent RVs um, at all of our various races so people don't have to go get hotel rooms. That way they can stay on the track with everybody else. Man, that is awesome. Unless you're like the three ringleaders of BSM and forgot to ask the guy who orders the RVs if you ordered an RV that we could sleep in at Daytona and nearly got <laughs> like a very expensive fucking hotel room. And then I had the bright idea to ask Jake, hey, <laughs> did you get a, a second RV for like me, Daniel Fennell and probably somebody else? He's like, yeah, yeah, I've had it this whole time. <laughs> so the three of us were planning in a fucking bubble not not even this i i don't remember ever bringing up jake so i mean that's yeah we we're a fucking we're a rolling mess i don't know how we how we make this thing work i don't know but god damn it it works and it's fun <laughs> well i'm gonna tell you man yeah i know what it was like when i was racing and the safety i think i had more money invested in safety equipment than i did the car you know, to be honest. And yeah, like you said, man, I can imagine having to replace that stuff because that's that's where the money is. That's where, you know, maybe a little bit more for you guys because you're running, you know, bigger cars and, and everything else than what I was running. But, uh, you know, yeah, I, I remember. And that was – so the end of my racing time ended with uh, um, a disagreement between me and the track. So, uh, like I said, I ran a, uh, a Chevy Love. And, uh, the season before I, uh, um, blew a head gasket. So, you know, not having a whole lot of money, I replaced the head gasket and, uh, fired it up and everything was going great. And, uh, I let the clutch out and pulled it out of the garage and watched the low pressure gauge go. Oh, no. <laughs> and I, I spun a set of main bearings and, uh. So I, I asked him, I said, you know, can I, can I put a, a S10 motor in this? Nope. Yeah. Has to be stock. Came with an Isuzu engine. It's going to be an Isuzu engine. I said, yeah, if I had some bigger sponsors, it wouldn't have to be. I can promise you that. But... Right. <laughs> but I didn't I bring no money old, in. Old love motor is probably not that easy to find a good running love motor. You know, mm -hmm. everything's been swapped already. Yeah. And um, the, the rebuild know. kit was the same price as buying a crate motor for an S10. Yeah, right. You know, exactly what? You know. Who? I'm going to clip out just for a second. I got to make a head call. Okay. Whoa. <laughs> yeah, so needless to say, that was, you know, I had to choose between racing or food, so I decided to eat. Yeah, that's a, that's a solid. Yeah. It's it, it's expensive, man. You know, like they always say, it's it's a rich man's hobby. You're not going to get rich from doing it. And mm -hmm. uh, you know, my hats off for you guys what you're doing because I I don't honestly think there's anybody else out there doing this. If there is, I don't there, know about them. There's a there's a couple. Um, really? 
There's yeah, there's Racing View Heroes. Uh, they're based out of uh, VIR, so v- Virginia International Raceway. Um, started by a guy named Mike Evok, um, Army Special Forces uh, warrant. <clears throat> And then you have um, you have Ranger Road, but Ranger Road is like a large umbrella, and then they have uh, folks underneath of it. So they have like a dive thing, they have a horseback riding, mm-hmm. uh, they have a skydiving deal, and then they have Ranger Road Motors, and they have a uh, they have one car. They're in California, but they primarily work with uh, disabled folks. Okay. Whereas we have car our primary cars. So we have nine, eight or nine in total. I think only seven or eight are uh, running and driving and race ready. Because mm-hmm. um, running and driving and race ready are two very different things. Oh, yeah. Uh, as you know. Uh, but we have a hand control car as well. So we can get guys and gals behind the wheel who have lost their legs or the use of their legs. Okay. They can get behind the wheel of that car and raise it because it's hand controls. Now, we got that idea from Ranger Road because they, the, they had that car and have had that car like that for a while. But okay. we never made the leap um, because we didn't we weren't comfortable with it at the time. We were still kind of small. Um, but AMS Vans uh, donated the the hand control setup. We had it, the car sent to Houston. It was installed. Um, and, you know, we, we had a great time. There's another group uh, out of. Uh, somewhere in somewhere in Oregon or uh, Washington State, I can't for the life of me, remember the name of the group, but they, they predominantly run, oh, excuse me, up uh, Northwest and um, in Lucky Dog Racing League. Okay. Do you, get, do you guys have any races around the Missouri area? There's a track there called Ozarks, uh, but we, if we run it, it'll be our very senior, very experienced folks driving that course. Mm-hmm. It's not, for the faint of heart, I'm um, Brian. You can go into that more than I can. Yeah, absolutely. So you know, not only is it a long track, it's a lot of blind corners, overhill corners. So you, you need that. You need to know what's going on, and that's not definitely not a track for newbies. So we we definitely talked about it when it was first being built. Man, we were actually really um, excited about it because it's like, man, that's that place looks awesome. Then you look at the blind overhill corners and. Yeah, you know, it's got K rail really close to the track, so your guardrail stuff, and and I was like, you know, there's not a lot of room for you know whoopsies and for new drivers on this track. So yeah, uh, but it's definitely one that I want to drive. So yeah, will it happen? Well, not not only just me. It's it's not about. It's me, gonna be a very but, select group. Of we have that we, we have a group guys that, that definitely want to drive it. Um, so it's got to be the right time, right event. Um, yeah, I'm trying to think what else is close to that area. Well, you got you got Kansas, but that was that was only oh, a one. Yeah. yeah, that was a yeah. They haven't done that one in a while. But then Champ Car, the one that we run predominantly with, uh, they have events like in Ohio. They have events in Indianapolis as well. Um, they have events in uh, Illinois. I think in Minnesota or Michigan, I can't remember. So there's something that's probably close-ish, but nothing in Missouri proper. I actually, you know where Mexico, Missouri is? I do. I went to that military academy that's there. Okay. <laughs> in the <laughs> in the fourth grade. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we had there was like eight or nine kids in my class in my fourth grade class. Well, if you guys ever at a, a a track around here, I'll I'll definitely come out and film it for y'all. And yeah, that'd be you know, good. Add add some more exposure to you guys. Yeah. You know how how it where you where you at in Missouri? I'm in Rolla, about eighty uh, miles southwest of uh, St. Louis. Yeah, that's still a little ways over there. I'll say because we'll we'll be in the, that's still not that close to you. I, I guess it depends. You know, being in Texas, you know, if you're not driving 600 miles somewhere, that's that's normal. Um, (laughs) (laughs) You know, Howlett, that's in between Oklahoma City and Tulsa. We'll be there May 20th. That's probably I was looking at the map here to see what else. Now, once. Once 
our Illinois chapter gets rocking. There'll be some probably some events up that way. Okay. Um, yeah. Indiana. Or Indiana, yeah. yeah. Crayons. That's what that's why they call them crayons. <laughs> um I don't look. I was looking on the map right here, but most of the stuff is a little more north. But anyways, yeah, absolutely. If we, especially if we run Ozarks, if that comes up, now some of us may just do it outside the organization too, which it'd probably be a lot of veterans doing it. And if we end up, yeah. we have to do it too, because that'd be a lot of fun just yeah. to just to hang out. So yeah, yeah, absolutely, man. Yeah. So there's a there's a big event going on in September 9th in Lincoln, Nebraska. So you know, I'm going to make the drive up there, and uh, I'm going to live stream the concert for them. That they're having. Oh, uh, cool! It's got like four bands. Um, there's a a group called Ruck for Warriors. They're doing a uh, a road nice. march into, and they'll end the road march at the event. And then there's another group called uh, Wheels for Warriors. Um, they're going to be a part of a uh, it's a thousand mile uh, uh, motorcycle ride, and they're going to drive from uh, Lincoln to I think it's Oklahoma City, and then turn around and drive back. It's called Rhonda's Ride. And they'll end their event there at Hero Stock, and uh, then it'll nice. have the concert and everything else, completely free to veterans and and everybody. So I'm gonna go down there and live stream it for them because they don't have anybody that can get it out. And I'm gonna put it on the radio station and you know help get the word out. So yeah, I'm, I'm all about man coming out That's and awesome. filming some stuff and yeah, taking pictures. And, yeah, you know. yeah, we definitely got to get you out to one of our events this year. Um, I don't know which one might be it. Well, we'll have to coordinate schedules and see what yeah. see what we're up to because that's okay. it's it's a it's a neat deal. Uh, just just like all your veteran stuff that you go to, you know, it's it, there's always something special about meeting back up with 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 people that have been you know what the same road you've walked. To understand, you know, mm-hmm. they, they get you dark humor sometimes because um, <laughs> sometimes you tell a joke around regular civilian people and they look at you like you're just. Like, did you just say that, Michael? And look yeah. at you like you're mentally disabled. <laughs> yeah. Not like regular disabled. Like you're, you're so, special. So, yeah, so those events always, you know, that's what makes them so fantastic because you, you get to go be with like-minded people yep. and and enjoy the day. And and um, it's just hard to beat. Yeah, man, I, I completely yeah. agree. And, and, you know, that's what I love about what I do, man, I come across a lot of smaller organizations. And I think, I think that is where the the love for veterans really is because the organizations are so small. That's not about the money that, that you know, they don't have a, a lot of brick and mortar expenses and, and everything yeah. else that they're, they're trying to do. And all the money can go back towards helping the veterans, you know? So that, that's you know that's really where this show started from was was trying to network you know i and i'm going to add you guys to my website um there'll be a a section there for you guys with a link to you know if, your facebook or or websites whatever you guys have as yeah. as a resource that's available you know the uh that's the awesome. other thing the other thing that i'm working on is uh all these organizations so with the radio show with the radio um show it's it's veteran contest so uh podcasters that are veterans music singers comedians that's what's on the content all these organizations that i interview i'm going to make commercials and advertisements for them and that's going to be my advertisement space to help get the words out you know awesome you know that's that's something i can do and and that's how i can do my part you know so i definitely you know i used to own a trucking company and uh, I ended up, uh, that's where I got out of the military and I started a, a trucking business because I couldn't find work. And uh, I was in Georgia at that time. And, uh, you know, my mom's health took a, a shit and uh, I was running loads going from Nebraska to Iowa. So the freight, or not Nebraska, but uh, from Georgia to Iowa. And the freight in those lanes, if you know anything about trucking, just sucks. You know, you'll make okay money going to Iowa. You won't make shit coming back. Right. And it just got to be too too much where I had to make too many trips. So I finally just closed the uh, the business. And uh, that's what brought me here to Missouri. I took a job working in the mining industry. So, yep, yeah, absolutely. Awesome. Absolutely loved it, man. And and I, I love what I'm doing. I get to talk to people like you guys. And, and when I came across you guys, I was like, man, there can't be nobody else that does this. And this is 
awesome. <laughs> you know? I would yeah. say nobody else does it at our capacity. Yeah. Are, like I was saying earlier, there are other organizations, but nobody does. You nobody know, has chapters in multiple states yeah. for, for one. Uh, yeah. Nobody runs multiple cars that I'm aware of. Um, I don't which, think no one runs the amount of events we do. No. We, we ran that. 10 events last year, 10 events the year before that. And this year we're, it's like we're at 17 or 18. Wow. Yep. I mean, we're just, we're just, it's the, the, just the amount of events and, and what we do with what we have, right? The Marine, you know, oh, well, I mean, most of our board, hell, 80% of the board is Marines. Yeah. You know, yeah. And, and we've always, you know, We've always had to do more with less. We're, yep. we're used to that in our careers, right? Yeah. So, and, and I think that absolutely translates to what we're doing because, you know, we, we're we not like some of these bigger organizations that just have an influx of funds. Yep. We, we, we make things happen with such a small amount of money that would probably baffle a lot of people. Yep. Uh, and, but that's okay. We, we figure out how to do it and, and um, adapt and overcome, and, and we do it. Yep. And, and I, I can only imagine how hard it is to get one the sponsorship for for this, you know. Um, how do you do? You guys advertise for the sponsors? Do you guys do events for them or something? How how is it that that you guys come about to get your sponsorships? Mul- multiple ways, right? So from from checks in and out. <laughs> I mean, there was uh, a, I think he was like the 50. most the most emails I've ever sent out in a day. Cold emails. 368 Holy shit. in one day. And I think I did that in like six hours. Wow. Uh, and here's how I do it. I make <laughs> up, I have, I have templates already made for morning, afternoon, and evening. Yeah. So if I have, if I come across somebody and it's whatever time of day it is, as long as I have the email, copy, paste, next, yeah. copy, paste, whoop. That's, 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 I mean, now that's for just about everybody. Yeah. But if I come across someone who has something that we specifically need, then I will go in and alter it accordingly. I'll change right. some things out. I'll make it personal. So of the 368, there were probably 150 of them that were personalized, but all the other ones were. <laughs> it, essentially feelers, <laughs> right? Yeah. Yeah. And oh, the way oh. I was doing it, I was taking advantage of Facebook's algorithm and so I was scrolling through and I, as soon as I saw a company that would even anywhere close to what we were doing, like need something or could be a part of it. I click on their thing, go to their website, find a contact, send next. And that's how I was doing it. Wow. Uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, and, you know, just, just networking through just, you know, you, you just never know when a personal contact comes up. 2019, I went to PRI. And quickly realized everyone else at PRI, which is performance raising industry show, yep. is doing the exact same thing as I'm doing. You know, you have all these small teams going around with all these manufacturer vendors, and they're doing the same thing. Hey, sponsor my team. I'm doing this. I'm like, so it was an uphill battle. But but that alone, when you go around and you, you tell the story of what you're doing, hey, we're not we're not just trying to raise money for a, a race team. We're raising money to help veterans and first responders. And, and then you see their eyes open a little bit. Yep. And, yeah. And so that, that kind of networking is good, but it's still it's still tough. You know, oh, you yeah. I've talked to hundreds of people. We picked up a really good um sponsor out there in 19, uh Rini Technologies with our cool shirt systems. Mm-hmm. Uh, they've been fantastic to us, uh, helping us keep our guys cool in the cars. Um, uh, but Man, it, it takes some groundwork, you know. Yeah. So, hundreds of emails, the the, the groundwork, talking to people, networking, yeah. all all that comes into play, you know. Yeah. Eventually, eventually, it'll stick to the wall. Throw something, something will stick. Um, <laughs> right. That's what we were doing at first, but now we we're a lot more targeted. Yeah. In who we email, we went from like our my initial. <laughs> this is how much I've learned. Uh, you know, my initial send out to these people was like two pages. If you copy and paste it into yeah. Microsoft Word, it was two pages of basic bullshit. And it was just like, 
explaining who we were down the nitty gritty, like me and Brian and Phil and a bunch of the people, our OG folks, like fucking dumb. And finally, after like a year and a half of this, I'm I'm a positive blood type. uh, (laughs) Might as well. Then finally, one one gal, uh, I think it was, I forget the company. Maybe I think it was Race Ramps. It was Race Ramps. The gal, the scout wrote me back. She's like, hey, I absolutely love what you're doing. We will donate as long as you shorten your email when you send this out to somebody else. <laughs> and I was like, fucking bet. <laughs> and so, well, actually, I didn't say fucking bet because that wasn't cool to say three years ago. So I have no idea what the fuck I said. <laughs> <laughs> Talking about that and the amount of emails that, that Chick was sending out. So M- Impact Racing has been one of our gear sponsors and, and helped us with pricing on gears and stuff. So I made it a point to go by their booth at PRI to say, thank you. Thanks for helping us out a little bit, you know, blah, 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 blah. And so I'll go and introduce myself. And they're like, man, is it, is it, they said, you're the one that sends all the emails. I'm like, no, that's, <laughs> that's our president, Brian. I'm, a, I'm, I'm, I'm second in line. I'm CEO. I'm, I'm Brian. <laughs> they said, we finally just came in because of the amount of emails he sent us. <laughs> <laughs> I do do that. I, I don't do that anymore, but I used to do that. If I knew your email oh. address was good, I I had it set up where every week I would email people and I go back into my send items. I tally who responded and who didn't. And then I would just hit reply all, delete the <laughs> shit that came in from the reply, delete the RE and the, and the topic, the subject, and just fucking send it. So it was the same thing that they had received the week prior. And I would do that for a month for every single one. Now, if a month went by after four emails and nothing, then I usually would let it go. And then maybe at some point I'll remember and I'll send a, I'll send something else. But you know, yeah, yeah, I, I typically do. I typically will beat the fuck out of somebody until they respond. <laughs> on days, on days that it's like 368 of them are going out, no. But if it's, if it's like, uh, I forget the name of the company, but they have, um, really good quality uh, seat belts or not saw belts or something else. I forget the name of the company. Bro. They had originally said that they were going to donate enough for all of our cars. And at the time we had five, four or five cars at the time. So this is like two years ago. And then they stopped responding to me. So I was <laughs> like, okay, daddy can play this game. So for like two months, I was emailing them every week, twice a week, like, Hey, you know, and, but I, and I was replying to the reply that I replied from the reply. So I was replying to my own email. So when they finally replied, there was like five weeks of me of like maybe 10 or 12 messages of me saying different variations of, Hey, checking in. Um, we really still need these belts. We really want to work with you guys. Can we, whatever, something along those lines for like six, five or six weeks. And they finally, I, they probably said, fuck it. And no, we can only give you one. And then, uh, I emailed, they were like, give me the address. I sent the address. 10 minutes later, I got an email from FedEx that had already fucking, they had already printed the shipping label. (laughs) So it works. You keep bugging fuckers. Eventually, you know, the squeaky wheel gets the goddamn grease. Eventually they're going to get in. Um, Like right now, I got one of our sponsors. I'm not going to name them, but they, they put, they put me, give me some silent treatment. That's one that we need badly. And they take care of us every year. So it's a year of supply of things um, and they're not <laughs> responding to me. So inside I'm like freaking out a little bit because that's a lot of damn money that we never have had to spend really in yeah. the last three years. And we've been around for almost five. So uh, that's a huge bummer not being able to talk to them. And then I found out recently that four of the five people that I communicate with are all gone. <laughs> They fucking left the company. So I only got one dude left. That guy got like a crazy ass promotion. And so now from what I'm being told, he's too busy essentially for peasants. Uh, oh, wow. I guess. I don't know. I keep the emailing peasants. him. I got, and I had another guy from enterprise. This was like, again, this was too, this was right after COVID. This guy uh, was on the board. So I, I don't know how I found the guy. I don't know how I found his email, but I cold emailed him. Um, oh no, I know where I got it. I got it from a professional symposium and I got a book. Uh, I got it somewhere. I got a booklet of all the major players in logistics that work with the DOD. And in the book, 
It has all of the head honchos emails for hundreds of companies. I'm talking like from Raytheon to Enterprise to Damn. fucking uh, Joe Schmo's Bullet Shop. They're all fucking on there, right? And so I started emailing these people. And one of them was Enterprise and talks with me and him. The guy was like, yep, yeah, we could start doing like two grand a quarter. And then he just fucking ghosted me. And But because of who he was, I didn't let up for over a year and a half. Over a year and a half, I was emailing that guy every week. Uh, <laughs> and I finally gave up sometime mid last year. I think I finally just said, fuck it. He's not responding. He could have at least blocked me. And then it would have been like, this, this is undeliverable. Yeah. So it was like, you know, he, the, this dude's getting the emails, but I'm never, never getting a response is driving me crazy. <laughs> man. Well, let me ask you, man. So if, if somebody's looking to, to join you guys, what, what's the best way for them to get a hold of you? Go to our website. We actually just had it fixed thanks to a guy named Wes, who is also a Marine. Uh, so if you go to our website, battlescar.org. Okay. And I'll, and I'll make sure I put it in the link for the, uh, the video and everything, too. Yeah. Uh, on the main landing page, um, if you're on a computer, on your phone, it'll be somewhat similar. There's like the three lines. You click it, yep. and it'll be one of the topics that come down. You'll click, I want to race, or push it, tap it, whatever the fuck. Uh, and you'll scroll down, and then it basically it, it says, come race with us. You know, everyone is welcome. You've got first name, last name, email, phone number, city, state, so we know where you're at because that's important. We're not trying to fucking, you know, find out where you take your dog to, yeah. the, to the dentist. You know, we just want to know where you live. Because if you say you're in like Timbuktu, Wisconsin, well, you're going to wait a while because we're not adding a chapter over there. Yeah. <laughs> right. But let's say you're, you're in Seattle or you're like in Washington State or Oregon. Well, we know it. We know organization that's there. If you're in Virginia, we know an organization that's there. If you're in California, Arizona, or Nevada, we know a, 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 a group that's in California. So that that's not just for us. We can we can give you to somebody else if need be. If you you cannot be with us, um, we'll ask your age because that's important. Um, we probably don't want any ninety year olds writing because we don't want them dying of a stroke in our car. Uh, and it's funny because well, I'm looking at this now. West put age, and then in in uh parentheses he put must be licensed driver 16 or over but i would say every veteran <laughs> is already <laughs> over that age so i need it <laughs> i think we could probably remove the back end and then if you're a military first responder and then branch and then we have a list of all of the tracks that we have scheduled for this year um we also want to know about your your racing experience um and then do you own any sfi uh rated racing equipment so that's how we this is new. This is this is like last week we finally did this. Wow. And we've been needing to do this forever. Uh, it just took Brian a long time to get Wes on board. Yeah. Yeah. So the web the website, battlescard.org. You also can reach out to us on uh Facebook's another good option. Uh you yep. can message us on Facebook. We'll get you in contact with our race director, Jake Irving, and then he'll get you all set up, ask all the important questions that I always forget. Yeah. Awesome, actually, you know what I think about it? We actually have Jake's a Marine, you're a Marine, I'm a Marine, Brian's a Marine, Strack. Yeah. Who, who, uh, and then our, our web guy, Wes. Wes, Wes our Marine. web guy, is a Marine. And then who else? Kenny's a civilian. Yeah. Leslie's Kenny. a civilian. Oh, and Daniel. Daniel's I, like, I forgot Daniel. Watch this. <laughs> the fucking the grunt from Nazaria uh was at seven yeah that's i think i was at seven i think there's se yeah there's seven of us that are marines and you have kenny leslie is that it yeah kenny and leslie are they the only civilians we have on our we got we got joe bart oh and steve and steve kissner yeah <laughs> We got people right. everywhere. We got people everywhere. That's it, man. <laughs> I mean, yeah, definitely. You know, I didn't realize how many chapters and, and everything that you guys got, man. You guys got a big reach. Yeah, we're it's it's a it's a lot. It's been it's been super rewarding. Um, you know, the different events, even what what is what is wild to me 
you know, being COO and then running Texas chapter, I kind of stayed mid states, Gulf region, you know, maybe over to, I guess maybe Birmingham and where I run at, uh, at Barber over there. Well, I've been all the way up to CMP too, but I usually fly out there. But ever since we got our, you know, started our Georgia chapter with Kenny, you know, that's AMP, Road Atlanta, um, all the East Coast stuff. And and I haven't even been to those radio. We got a huge organization. I haven't been over that way yet, you know, and that's yeah, that's pretty wild to me that I haven't even got over to our now now we race together when they when we all meet up mid country, like we run a big race at NOLA um in the uh um fall, I guess almost winter. Yeah, November with Champ Car. Yep. And that's that's one of our big events. So all of our chapters kind of come together. We have well wow. I mean, how many we had five five cars we had last five. Year? We actually had six cars. Wait, no, we had five, five or six cars when we were there in November. We had six cars there. Five were running. Uh, Rosie, our head no, Rosie was a backup. Was our, was our backup because one of our uh, Miatas went down. Um, man, how many drivers? What's what's our most driver count? How many drivers have we had at an event? I mean, we've had sixty plus. Uh, it was. It would have been. It would have been Nola. The. I think we were, did. We run six cars at NOLA in March of last year, and that was when we were like, "We're not running." Was, yeah, we're like, "That's too many," and then we keep doing it. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, because the, the November. Yeah, you're exactly right. Because the November before that, we ran five cars for the first time ever at MSR Houston. Yeah, and our Georgia chapter. God bless uh, Kenny and Debbie Clark. They drove from Georgia to Houston, and it should have been a 12-hour drive, and it took them 16 hours from Damn. what they were saying. I think they said 12 or 13, and it took them over 16 hours to get there. But, yeah, that was a cluster, a giant clusterfuck. We had no idea what it was going to be like to run that many cars. I think the only most we've had at that point was, like, maybe three. Three? Yeah, it would have been three. Three yeah, at Barber so. uh, at the beginning of that year was a – well, no, no. Well, yeah. Yeah, it was the beginning of that year. And then the very next race was Nola, and we ran six cars. So within <laughs> within four months of us saying never again, we literally we fucking did doubled it again. the count. <laughs> we did it again and added more cars. So it's like hold my beer. <laughs> and then we and then we're all we get and then you know, so like the wives, our wives are usually there, right? So like my wife Laura and Daniel's wife Christy and and sometimes Fennell's wife, Christy, comes, but typically that's MSR Houston, Hallett, uh, or not Hallett, Harris Hill, I'm sorry. Harris Hill, yeah. Um, uh, and then you've got Kenny's wife, Debbie. And so the women are usually there, like, kind of running the show behind the scenes, but also being, like, in your face if they see, which is nice because if they see people making a mess, they say something. And it's usually not me. So it feels great when they're running around. <laughs> Uh, telling people to keep the place clean, which is great, but they're the ones that really keep it going. Um, you know, they really enjoy it. Uh, I bring my kids. Fennell brings his kids. Uh, yep. Strack has got his wife involved in it now, so she's going to be running with us, I think, here soon. Yeah, she uh, she, she did her first race with us. Uh, that's right. She just did it. Yeah, at Harris Hill in our new edition seventy four Pinto wagon. <laughs> <laughs> That is the coolest Nothing thing. Nothing screams dominance like a 74 Pinto wagon. Well, it did dominate. <laughs> it dominated Wes's Mustang at Coda in June of 2020. It did. So it Champ Car, did. we were live streaming out of the Pinto. And Champ Car, with, with between it and Wes's car Mustang, a V8 Mustang and a four-cylinder Pinto, were neck and neck, back and forth racing for position it was fantastic and of course it's all on video with the live stream so champ car kept airing the live stream out of the pinto of all things out of all the other fast cars at coda circuit of americas in austin texas a f1 track they were airing a pinto wagon running around this track. <laughs> and there was no shame i sat on my living room because i had i had just had spinal fusion surgery like a month prior and i couldn't go i i was my doctor flat out told me, like, you, you'd be an idiot. You wouldn't even make it. You'd be so miserable in a car trying to drive. Flying wouldn't be any better. You're still not mobile. Like, you know, don't go. 
because I wanted to go as Coda for fuck's sake. Um, but uh, yeah, they. The, I saw the Pinto so m- you didn't even know who else was fucking racing. I felt like wow. at some point because that's all they talked about was this little I kept race. Checking the live stream on Champ Cart and like Check is in there and like half the comments are Check. No, the standing for Battle Scar. Were we? No, we were still <laughs> USMC racing then, huh? I think we were because we didn't change until December of that year. Yeah, that's right. God, that is awesome. Yeah, they, uh, yeah, I definitely blew up the comment section on that thing. <laughs> yeah, you got you got a contraband shirt on right now, as a matter. Of I fact. do, I do have contraband shirt on. <laughs> if uh, if old boy from the Pentagon's watching, go fuck yourself. <laughs> <laughs> I don't give a oh, fuck anymore. Wait. So the backstory behind that, we used to be Uncle Sam's misguided children racing, USMC racing, because everyone that started it was all Marines. And then as it as it turned out, everyone, majority of people we've in, uh, interacted with up until probably the second year was mostly Marines, right? Yeah. And um, so you've got, you know, Chesty over here painting with Marpet because you can see it's tan on this side, but the other side is green. It's got green digital on the other side. A blood stripe down the center. We've got an eagle and an anchor on it. And yada, 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 yada. Well, so it was recommended to me that we submit for trademark for uh, like the name and all that kind of shit. And I'm like, oh, okay, cool. So I submitted for it and didn't hear anything back, which usually it takes, you know, a couple months or whatever. And then one random day, I get a call like from a 703 or whatever number the Pentagon is. Um, and I'm like, what? Because I recognize the area code, be, you know, being in the Marine Corps and as an officer, eventually you're going to talk to somebody in the fucking Pentagon. So I, I recognize the area codes. So I knew I knew where the number was coming from. So I pick it up and it's this guy and I can see him now still. Uh, oh, matter of fact, where is that? We had Do a painting. We had a painting. Remember that painting that was made from Justin? We had a character made about this guy. So backstory. This guy works as a like a, a legal whatever the fuck in the Pentagon's trademark office, office specifically for the Marine Corps, right? And so his whole thing is going on trademark, whatever the, all that stuff goes, and making sure people aren't like using the Eagle Woman Anchor and trying to take USMC and all sorts of kind of bullshit, right? Um, so he calls us. He's, you know, all up in arms about using USMC racing, you know, you know, we haven't asked for permission and the car's painted in digital paint. He's like, we need to change it and this, all that. And I'm like, dude, and we had a website, I think, at that point. I was like, have you even read the website of like what we do? Like you, you, you realize what you're, what you're wanting me to do, right? Like you're wanting me to s- cease and desist what we've been doing for veterans and first responders for two years. Yeah. Two, two and a half years at this point. Two and a half years, yeah. uh, and it's like, you want us to shut it down because you didn't like the fact that we have your name, then fine. Fuck it. I don't give a shit. Like you can like then throw away the trademark. Well, no, it's too late. We already know you guys have it. You guys have to change it. And I told the guy essentially, I was like, listen, dude, you're, you're barking up the wrong tree. I said, because I can fucking guarantee you right now, we're not stopping what I'm doing. However, if we must change the name, then okay, fine. That's we can do that. But if you're asking me us to stop, you're out, you know, that's not fucking happening. And he was like, Well, who's your he's like, you're active duty, right? I said, You're goddamn right. And I gave him my commanding officer's name, like uh, that's the colonel that was in charge of our section. I told him where I work, everything. I'm like, feel free to call him. And they won't give a shit either. Because they <laughs> love what I'm doing. And I never heard a fucking word about it afterwards. Uh, <laughs> But we did change our name very quickly. And it, it was one of our most commented and reactive, reacted, reacted on posts that was organic and not an ad that we've ever had. I yeah. mean, matter of fact, we lost the most people on the day we made that post than we've ever lost. Because if you go wow. on our history of like uh, who joins and who like and, and then leaving, we lost nearly 30 people that day. As soon as I made that announcement, it was like bloop, 30 people were like, fuck y'all and left. Wow. <laughs> like just cause our name changed. Okay. But yeah. yeah, we had the new name. What? Like in a week it was, uh, I think Phil actually was the one who came up with battle scar. I had phalanx first phalanx, something or another. Yeah. And we were about had- those names back and forth and trying to figure out 
what encompasses all since we encompass all from you know all branches you know first responders yeah yeah you know, mm-hmm. and and you know the the battle scarred right we all we've all fought different battles and and we've been scarred from different situations so that that definitely rang with us hey you know what that kind of that kind of describes everyone that that wants to partake with us right that is uh, awesome yeah. man yeah yes yeah. so that, that's it it was a it was kind of a bittersweet, right? You know, I mean, who it was? Who got- that was hard. That was a hard week, man. I I was fucking yeah. devastated because as hard as I was with that guy, and so if you know me, like I'm, this is gonna sound really bad, but I can be like a real asshole on the phone or in text, but in person, I'm like this big fucker down here. I'm like a teddy bear. Like I don't, <laughs> I don't provoke shit. Like I don't. I'll get mad and then I'll walk away and I'm fine. Sometimes just uh, needs hugs. Just need hugs. Yeah, yeah <laughs> usually. As a matter of fact, after he said at Daytona, I was getting upset about something. Oh, well, maybe yeah, someone not cleaning, probably. And <laughs> he was like, You just need a hug. And I was like, And it was just like you see in a cartoon with like a little kid. I just like shuffled over and just like, <laughs> fucking hug me. And that's, he just put his arms around. So, yeah. I don't know how the fuck we diverge into that. And by we, I mean me. So <laughs> I have no idea how that happened. <laughs> well, man, I, I, you know, I appreciate you guys coming on. Um, the way, the way I do this is, uh, is every Wednesday, the, the episode will go live. Okay. And I will send you guys uh, the date and the l- link and everything for the date. Okay. This is going to go live. Well, then on that following Friday, I live stream the, the video on our Facebook page. And then that's, you know, usually when I throw back a few beers and I'll get in the chats and, and talk with everybody. Oh yeah. That'll be fun. Yep. And I, and I'll, like I said, I'll, I'll gladly get you guys the links for that too. And- Actually, you know what? Well, we'll, no, I got, we'll do one better before you post to Facebook, both of those times you and I need to link up. So it's a cross, so it's cross posted. Okay. That way it's organic for both of us, because if I share it, I'm losing all of that stuff. Okay. But if we cross post it, it, we we basically double our chances of it winding up in people's feeds okay. who, who already like us. And then we're doubling the chances of getting people who have not seen it, but they fall into the demographic of veterans, cars, blah, 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 blah. Dude, that's awesome. Yeah, absolutely, well, let's, man. I'll, let's do I'll, a cross post for yeah, sure. I'll get with you and we can hop on Zoom and okay. and uh, work that yeah, out. That's pretty easy. You just got to like chain. You just got to send a thingy and then you got to receive it and you say yes. And it's. Okay. Yeah. Just send the just send the thingy. Just send the, <laughs> just send the thingy. <laughs> well, like I said, man, I appreciate it, man. And, and I will I will definitely uh share the shit out of everything I see coming from you guys, man. Oh, cool. Yeah, man, we appreciate the heck out of it. It was, it was fun being on. Yep. And uh yeah, I know I forgot how these are fun. I forgot about how much fun they are. Yeah, <laughs> man. I, I love them, dude. This is this is just my hobby, man. I enjoy it. So awesome. Yeah. Cool. Well, it was great like meeting you, Donald. I appreciate it. Yep. Nice to meet you guys too. And if you're ever racing anywhere within a four or five hundred mile radius of me, let me know, and I will definitely come out and film it and get a bunch of pictures and share the shit out yeah. of those too. That One sounds good. I may just yeah. sweep them down and just pick them up. <laughs> 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 sounds good. I'm man. Here. Let's go. <laughs> just yeah. let just let me know. I'll throw some vacation days in. There don't get, right. don't <laughs> give me an excuse not to go to work. <laughs> there we go. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, I appreciate All it, guys. Right. You guys take care. Thank All you. Right. Have, Have a good night. night. You too. Bye-bye. Bye bye. Bye bye.